Mentor and Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. I have a radio show on a local Christian radio station here in South Florida. And I am going to do an audio today for that station. And I figured I'd record it for my Torah audience. And I'm going to be talking today about uh, the commandments of our wonderful Creator. And this is going to be addressed to the local Christian community. So bear uh, bear with me, sit back, enjoy, and you can put your comments and questions below the video, and we're going to get started in a moment. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson from Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining the program today. Torah Life Ministries is based on the instructions of our Creator, which many Christians often refer to as the law or the laws. And there's a teaching out by Christianity today that says man is no longer under the law or we can't keep the law. Well, the real word in Scripture is Torah. And Torah does not mean law. That's a uh, misquoted translation. Torah means guidelines and instructions. And the guidelines and instructions of our wonderful creator, Yahweh, and Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, has lived out these instructions and set an example for us how to live our life, confirming that these instructions are for us. Now, I have a question that somebody asked me that I want to answer about this topic, but basically the commandments also referred to as the law, is the will of our Father Yahweh. This is how He wants us to live. And He's given us this great, amazing book, the Bible, that contains all this information to show us how we can live our lives to be as safe safe and blessed as possible. So that's what we need to strive for and not run away from it. Most Christian churches today will teach an unbiblical message to tell us we are free from the law, and uh, because of the blood of Messiah, we no longer need to live our biblical lifestyle. Now, they might say that in different words, but that's what they're essentially saying. And we are not free from the instructions and will of our Father Yahweh. What we are free from is the penalty of death from, from not keeping the Torah. The grace of Messiah covers the penalty of death for that. But there's consequences for not living according to our Creator's guidelines and instructions. And that is, by definition, what is sin, what sin is according to the Scriptures. So I get a question from somebody that says, how do we keep Torah? Is the Ten Commandments or or all of the 613 laws? And that's basically the question because Christianity focuses on Ten Commandments, and then it dumbs them down to Two Commandments, and... Uh, That's what Christianity does, and Judaism talks about the 613 laws or statutes or ordinances found in the original covenant, often referred to as the Old Testament. And the real understanding is, is Torah is the first five books of the Bible, starting in Genesis, and within those first five books are these guidelines and instructions that is the will of our Father and how we should live our lives, which Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, confirmed to us later on. And we are only saved through salvation by the blood of Yeshua and no other way. We cannot work our way to to, to heaven. We can only be saved by what He's done for us. However, if we are truly saved, we should have every desire to keep the guidelines and instructions of our Creator to our fullest capability and ability. And and that's where our heart should be. It shouldn't be to do less, but it should be to do more. Now, the question being, uh, what is the Torah and and about the Ten Commandments versus the 613 commandments that are found in the Bible? Well, many times Christians will say, we cannot keep all of the commandments. We cannot keep all of them. And when they say this, they're referring to the Ten. And I say, yes, you're right. There's only one that can keep it all, and that is Yeshua. He was the only one that was spotless and perfect and sinless. So sin is transgression of the Torah, as it's quoted in the Renewed Testament or Renewed Covenant. And the only one that can keep every Torah command, whether whatever number you want to put on how many there are, was Yeshua Messiah. What I will suggest to you and suggest to every Christian out there is, we cannot keep every single commandment in the Bible, because we are not perfect, we are not Messiah, and this is why we needed Him, and need Him. However, Ten Commandments is a small fraction of the commandments that we are required to keep, and it is an embarrassing, shameful, misunderstood thing to think 
that as people who have confessed our life to Yeshua, the one who died for us, that we would say we can't keep a tiny percentage of the will of our Father. No, we can go way and beyond this tiny percentage of just 10. Now, some people come up with a number of 613, and that's a rabbinical thing that Yeshua came to actually rebuke the whole thing about adding to the Torah or adding to the Word. See, it says in the Scripture in Deuteronomy, do not add or take away, but keep my commandments. So Judaism has added and Christianity has taken away. But we're not into that. What we need to do is keep the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. And this number of the 613 really is not that high because when you take into consideration what we have the capability of doing and keeping today, and then when you take into consideration the duplication or the, of some of these statutes, laws, or commandments of whatever you want to call them, the number is much greater or lower than 613, but it is higher than the Ten Commandments. Now, somebody would say, is where do we find these guidelines and instructions and commandments? Well, the Bible, the word of our creator, the written word of our creator, not the hearsay, not the oral, but the written word of our creator has every single guideline and instruction for us, showing us the will of our Father. And that's what we should desire to study and learn and live. That's it right there. And that's what Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, taught us to do, to study, learn, and live it out. You know, do not add or take away, but it says, but keep. You know, we need to underline and highlight that word, but keep, keep the commandments. So when we think about this and we think, well, so there's not 613. Well, we are not required to keep all of the commandments because I am a man and a lot of the commandments are for women. So I cannot physically keep or accomplish those, those Torah commands. Now with the crazy psycho transgender movement today, that might change, but uh, I'm not getting involved in that. But if you're a woman, you're, 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 there's some Torah guidelines for you, instructions for you. And if you're a man, there are some Torah and guidelines and instructions for you. If you're a farmer, there's other guidelines and instructions. Many of the instructions that he's given us are built around a temple in Jerusalem, which currently is not there, so we can't follow those guidelines and instructions. But the ones we can't follow, we just simply can't do. The ones we can do, we should have a desire, a passion, and a joy to do them. And I will tell you, it goes way beyond the, the Ten Commandments. So let's just look at the Ten Commandments and think that it's it's so, you know, the, our Creator says, my commandment shall not be burdensome. Fine, we are not perfect, and His grace is going to cover us if our heart is in the right place, and He's the one that knows our, our motive. The Bible is clear not to make a practice of living in sin and enjoying it. There are no sacrifices, there's no mercy, and there's no grace for the willful sin that people do on a regular basis over and over again on a daily basis. But the, the sin that people want to overcome through repentance, he's given us his mercy to, to survive that situation. And there still might be consequences. But praise our wonderful creator that he's given us Yeshua to survive those situations. But the Ten Commandments, you know, when I mentioned to a Christian that, you know, I don't see any issue with somebody keeping the Ten Commandments or being able to keep the Ten Commandments. They're ten of, of many. And they're simple, moral guidelines and commandments of our creator. And, and many people don't even know what they are. You know, but the problem is many people are deceived to believe and many Christians are deceived to believe that they no longer need to keep those. Or they can cross out numbers and add numbers and say, well, I'm going to keep this one, but I don't think I should keep this one. I don't really know if I have to keep this one, but this one sounds good to me, so I'll keep this one. No, listen, folks, get your Bible out and you can go to Google, you can go to the Internet, you can go to the iPhone or wherever you want to go and make a list of all the commandments that are found in Scripture. What do you say as a commandment is? Well, any instruction that our Creator gave us, telling us either what to do or what not to do, in your study, and you don't have to rush this, but you do this. Make this commandment. Look at it. Every time our Creator told us, from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, 
Every time he speaks to you and tells you this is what needs to be done, and when he tells you this is what you shouldn't do, this is what you should never do, or this is an abomination, you make that list. All he wants you to do and all he doesn't want you to do. And then you start applying it. Well, can this apply to me? I'm not a farmer, so I can't do this. Can this apply to me? I'm not a woman, I can't do this. Can this apply to me? Absolutely. I'm a man and, I, and I'm living and I'm walking around and I certainly can take a, a rest on one day of the week like it says to take a rest on this day. Can I do this, this, and this? Can I? So now you highlight the things that you have the capability of doing, not the things that you want to do and don't want to do but the things that you know you should be doing and you have the capability of doing. And it says in James 4, 17 in the scriptures, to know good and not do it to him it is sin. So make that list so you know what good is according to our creator. That's what righteous living is. It's living right according to his instructions, not man-made instructions that we're getting from some guy in a church. Instructions according to our creator, not being told to live against them, but but living for them. So you make this list of the things that he said we should do. Then you could duplicate or, or, or get rid of all the things that are duplicated. So it's a more condensed list. Now, we're not getting rid of things that uh, you know we should be doing. But if something's there five times, have it on that list one time. So you have all these things on the list. And then you can start highlighting the things that apply to you. Condense the list even more. So now you come up with, with your list. But the list cannot be based on your feelings or, or what you think is best. It has to be understand, I accepted Yeshua, the Messiah, uh, as my Savior. And I made a, a, a promise to repent for living against the word and to start living for the word. So instead of getting caught up with, you know, is grace versus law. And, and that's such an oxymoron. It's not grace versus law. It's grace because of the law or grace because of the guidelines and instructions. Because we have a desire to keep the guidelines and instructions of our creator. He in return will give us grace. If we decide to go live our life and forget about uh, all our creator wants us to do, we're on our own. And I'll tell you this, folks. I've done a lot of studying of scripture. And I know one thing, that our creator Yahweh is much smarter than we are. He says in his word, I know the plans I have for you, and they are for good and not disaster, to give you a future and give you a hope. I want his plan because I desire to have a future and a hope. I don't want to be stuck in my own ways because the Bible says there's a way before each man that seems right, but ends in death. So I want to avoid uh, listening to myself and not leaning on my own understanding. I want to lean on his understanding and trust that he will direct my path. And the path that he wants us to go on is such a narrow path because so many people are choosing their way versus his way. But he says that narrow path is the only way to lead to the narrow gate. And that narrow path is the Torah, the guidelines and instructions of our creator. And that narrow gate is Yeshua, the Messiah. That's why it says many will be called, but only few will be chosen. That's why it says only few will find this path. Because we have to separate ourselves from the worldly fleshy desires. And we have to be led by the set apart spirit and seek the narrow road, to seek the path of Yeshua, not the path of the worldly ways and desires. And the only way we're going to find that path is to understand what our Creator wants us to do and His will for us. And the way we find out what His will for us is if we read the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. And no matter what translation it is, you'll find them. They're still there. And the internet today makes it even more simple how you can look up these things. Just go on the internet and do a search. Do this and don't do this. Keep this and don't keep this. I mean, it says it right there. Don't have any idols. So you got that word don't. Do this. Do keep the Sabbath. So you got the do's. You know, you could probably research on, on the internet and find a list already made. But you go and you even confirm it. Go check those scriptures. Don't take the internet's word for it. Don't take your pastor's word for it. You search it out yourself. And you get down in prayer and you start... Asking him to show you those things and to reveal his truth to you, to show you because you have a desire to, 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 to fill everything that he died for you. He set you free from death row, not so you would go living life the way you did before you knew him. No, so you would have a new life and live in a new way. And that's called being saved. You're not going to have the same heart once you are truly saved. Your heart is going to change. You are now going to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And the sad thing out there today, folks, is if you walk in many Christian churches, no matter what denomination it is, 
you got a whole bunch of people being deceived to think they long and no longer need to follow the will of our wonderful creator. And they justify that with their joy and their feeling good and, 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 and pleasing their flesh and everything else. No, no, that is an abomination to ignore the Father's guidelines and instructions. The fact that a Christian would even have to ask a question how do we keep Torah? Torah is the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. How, that's like saying, let's, let's translate that. Let's break that down. How do we keep Torah? That's saying, how do we follow the words of our Creator? How do we live righteously? Folks, listen to what you're asking. Okay, so you didn't know to what Torah was. You thought Torah was a Jewish thing for Jewish people. Torah is a Yahweh thing for Yahweh people. It's a Bible thing for Bible people. So how do we keep the guidelines and instructions of our Creator? You keep them. You know, you have no problem with discipline. You have no problem with obedience. I tell you why. There's a lot more laws in the land and the civil law than there is in the Bible. And you have no problem desiring to follow those. Because you know there's going to be consequences that's going to affect your life. You just don't know. And that's why it says in the Bible, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Where we all have knowledge, we have worldly knowledge. But what it really says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of the guidelines and instructions of the Torah. If you own a car in this country, you are keeping more laws than our Creator, than, than it says in the Torah, just by having a car and following these civil laws out there. There's not that many we need to keep, and they're not difficult because our Creator will never give us something we can't handle. And He says, keep my commandments, they shall not be burdensome to you. So we need to research and study these out and realize we're disciplined people. We have no problem stopping at a stop sign. We have no problem stopping at a, a red light and going at a green light. Well, if we have no problem keeping a law of man, why do we have an issue or create an issue with keeping a law of our creator? You know, somebody say, well, that's legalism. Well, you know what? You're a legalist to man. I want to be legalist to Yahweh. And it's not legalism because legalism means I'm relying on the, 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 the actions for salvation. No, I'm not relying on actions for salvation. I have Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, for my salvation. But what I'm doing is I'm showing my appreciation that he who created me says, no, every hair on my head created me in a womb. He would be so kind and generous not only to have his son die for me and shed his blood for me and get beat for me, but he wouldn't just leave me out in the cold with nothing. He would give me this amazing book with the instructions of how to live my life. And I can get that and read that. And I have the opportunity and freedom today. And all of us have the opportunity and the freedom today to open this book on a regular daily basis. To do it in public. To do it in private. To go and read this book and read his instructions and put them into action. There was a time where people didn't have that opportunity. Even today around the world, people don't have that opportunity. People are getting killed for trying to be obedient to the word of our creator. And then we come here to this country where people are purposely and falsely, they call themselves Christians, but they're hypocrites because they have no passion to understand and desire to keep the guidelines and instructions of our creator. When you have people that are willing to die and, and, and missing out on this opportunity to keep the guidelines and instructions in other parts of the world, where is your passion? Where is your desire to fulfill that call you made of Yeshua being the Messiah, the one you call Jesus? You know, it's more than just saying a couple of words, folks. It's a lifestyle. That's what we need to understand. So we need to, 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 to break this, this, this deception that's happening by the enemy of, of, of us thinking, as believers, we're doing all we can do. You're not doing all you can do. You need to do more. You need to follow the scriptures. You know, you need to have a desire to follow them. And it's a, if you ask, if you knock, that door will open. And you need to tell them, show me. Show me that this is what I need to do. Show me what I need to do and show me how to do it. Give me the strength to do it and help me for, for not going back to my, my, my abominational life that I was living before this. Give me those desires. This is what the scriptures talk about over and over again. I'll, I'll submit this to you. Anybody that's listening right now, I'll submit this to you. You want to see what the scriptures say about being obedient to our wonderful creator and it being possible? Open up your Bible and read Psalms 119. Read Psalms 119. When that whole Psalm talks about keeping the instructions, living for the instructions, uh, obtaining them and, and, and having them, seeking them and, and fulfilling them. Read that and ask yourself, why haven't I been doing this? Why has my church told me something different? 
Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, did not set you free from a law. He didn't give you a new set of instructions in the renewed covenant. He renewed the original set that was so important. He said, take them off paper and put them on your heart because they're that important. You need to know them by your heart. And he didn't change them. He didn't say, well, before I said do this, now I say do this. He said, no, this is so important. I want you to remember it. I want it on your heart so you can accomplish this, so you can do this. And he's given us the, the advice. He's given us the stories. He's given us the instructions on how to make this happen. He's provided people in our life to make this happen. He's provided the opportunity for us to make it happen because everyone has an opportunity to go to a, a congregation or a church or a home fellowship, read the Bible and fellowship with somebody else through the internet and through every other source out there today. We have an opportunity not just to say a couple of words and go living our lifestyle like we used to live, but no, to say a couple of words, but also mean it and back it up with our walk. And take action. Remember, it says, do not add or take away, but keep my guidelines and instructions. It's, 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 it's so clear. How do you mistranslate the word keep? But then I go to some Christian churches, and they, they, they just complete a complete abomination on the fourth commandment that says to keep the Sabbath day holy. They say, well, my Sabbath day is this day. But that's not what the Bible says. You know, you can't just change it around. You know, the Bible says not to eat pork. People say, well, I could pray over anything and eat whatever I want. But that's not what the scripture says. You've taken that completely out of context to please your flesh. And that's what people do. That's the trick of the, the enemy, the deception. If people are trying to please their flesh more than they're pleasing our creator and they have no fear of our creator. If you had fear of our creator, you'd be doing these things. You know, you fear man, you fear man's diseases, you fear bankruptcy, you fear losing your money, you fear losing your job, and you fear everything of man today. But you, you don't fear our creator. You don't desire to follow his guidelines and instructions. You got a job, the boss says to do something, you do it. You don't want to lose your job. You don't want to suffer the consequences of your disobedience to your boss. Or whatever relationship you have in life. You don't want to suffer the consequences of being disobedient or getting in an argument or something else. But you'll sit there all day long and deny what our creator asks us to do. And you'll, you'll try to argue against it. That's the enemy. That's the enemy deceiving us. We need to trust in him with all our heart and let him direct our paths. That's what you need to do, folks. You can contact me through my website, TorahLifeMinistries.org. I have tons, hundreds of videos on there for you, for you to check this out. Every Friday night, I have a live fellowship via the internet, via YouTube, where you can get on there from anywhere in the world, and we could talk and chat, and we, could, we, can, we can go over these things. I invite you to put your comments or questions under the video or the audio or wherever you're hearing this. Contact me through my website. You're not alone, folks. There are many people that are deceived out there. I was deceived. There are many other people that are deceived right now. But you know what? There are many people whose eyes have been opened. And it's not me that opened your eyes. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm not trying to make you change. I'm trying to give you the information that the scriptures say. And I pray that a wonderful Heavenly Father will be so gracious to open your eyes, that you would be ready for it, that he would open your eyes and you would see this truth and feel the joy and experience the blessings that come along with being obedient to his word and you stop putting yourself under the consequences of following man and you follow our creator. It's called coming out of Babylon and that's what I want you to do. I want you to come out of Babylon. Yeshua accepting him as our Messiah is not the end. It's the beginning, folks. It's the beginning. And we need to get away from being politically correct in this world, and we need to start getting biblically correct. And we need to get our priorities in order if we want to, to, uh, to for him to reveal more. And in season, he will continue to reveal, if, and, and, and we continue to grow as we continue to desire to follow him and please him. So ask him to put those desires on your heart. You know, speak to him, pray. How often do you pray every day? How often do you talk to him? And think about and look about what's going on with the people around you that you call yourself, they call themselves Christians or fellow believers or brothers and sisters, but they're living the abominations that go against the scriptures and against the guideline. If you truly loved these people, you would tell them the things you're hearing right now. You would tell them the truth. Not because you want to bring them down and hurt them. No, but you want to lift them up and help them. And that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I want to do for you. 
I want to lift you up and help you to let you know there is a way out. And our Creator says there's a more excellent way. So come out of Babylon and seek the more excellent way. And that more excellent way is to understand that we were on death row and He came and took our place, set us free when He didn't have to. So we would go out there and, and, and change the way we do things and start doing things according to Him and not according to us. You all have that opportunity. You know, the word repent today has become a curse word in the church today, but they don't want to offend anyone. I'm going to tell you, you need to repent. We all need to repent, and we need to, to ask him to, to continue to show us the way, and we need to read the words of Yeshua, the one we call Jesus. The whole thing of what would Jesus do? I'll tell you what, he wouldn't do what many of you are doing. He wouldn't do what many Christians out there are doing. He would do what his father said to do, and it says it clearly in the scriptures what to do, and that is found in the first five books of the Bible, known as the Torah, but is really the will of our Creator, the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. If you have kids, you don't want them to be in danger, so you learn from your mistakes and you tell them not to do certain things because they're not wise and they're not healthy. Well, our Creator has given us a book. We are His kids. He's given us a book and told us what, what not to do and what to do, and how to do it, so we can be blessed, we can be healthy, and we can have the great future and hope that he's offered all of us through his word, and through his Messiah, through his son, Yeshua, the Messiah, the one you call Jesus. You're not going to hear other people talking about this, because you know what? It's not a popular message, and it doesn't please the flesh to know I might have to do something that goes against my will, or I'm not or I am responsible for the consequences I receive through my actions, and my actions have to line up with the word, not against the word. More people should be talking about this, and if you want to see people in the Bible talking about this, turn to the prophets. Look at Jeremiah. Look at Isaiah. Look at Ezekiel. They're not telling or suggesting anything that I'm not telling you right here, right now. It's a clear message of Scripture. But today, Christianity has misconstrued. They have changed. They have watered it down. They have intertwined and mingled the seed of paganism in the church today. And you got more Christians following pagan days and pagan practices than you do of biblical practices. And they wonder why there's so much sickness and disease and unhappiness and tragedy in these churches today. We need to not mingle the seed, separate and divide ourselves from these, these unholy things. As it says, do not mimic the ways of Egypt where I have taken you or the land of Canaan where you are going. Do not mimic their ways. So I, I pray that you're getting this message and, and you understand this, what I'm saying, and you get to my website at TorahLifeMinistries.org. I, I really want to see people uh, get this, and I want to see your eyes being opened. And I don't want you to be deceived to think we can't keep the Ten Commandments. And I don't want you to be deceived to think that we can't uh, keep more uh, than just the Ten or, or that they're dummied down to two commandments. I want you to see the truth because it says in the Scripture, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Don't take my word for it, folks. Open up your Bibles and study your Bibles and ask our wonderful Creator to reveal it to you. I thank you for checking this out today, this message, and listening to this. Again, wherever you're hearing this, you can post comments and questions below the audio or the video, and it's also posted on my website. Until then, everybody, have a great week, and, uh, and shalom, shalom. Okay, everybody, there it was. I just did that message from my local Christian radio station. Thank you for checking it out. If you have comments or questions, post them below this video. And on my YouTube channel, you can look at the section that says uh, For Christians or on my website, For Christians, and you can see more previous messages like this. And then we have messages on a whole bunch of other topics. Until then, everybody, thanks for listening. Please forward this video to anyone you think it might benefit. Have a great day and shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world, 